disputed Zimbabwe president Emerson Mnangagwa now fears for his life more than ever. It's crazy. The president is no longer trusting his own motorcade. Three senior motorcade members resigned and were allowed to leave to other sectors. Nangagwa is now trusting the chopper, they say. Each time Nangagwa travels to the airport, the motorcade goes first without him. He then follows on the helicopter. He is in fear. He now fears everyone, the people of Zimbabwe, the military, and of late, his own security agents. On February 15, Munangago withdrew his letter relieving Zimbabwe Defense Forces Commander General Valerius Banda of his duties after the ZDF commander replied to that letter promptly, advising the commander-in-chief that he was going nowhere. In the letter, which had some parts written in red to emphasize some points, General Banda told Munangago that he can fire his son and everyone else, and not him. Nangagwa has made so many mistakes. One of those was trying to dispose of all those who were instrumental in the November 2017 coup. Then he promoted Lieutenant General Anselm Sanyatko a monument of blunder, as Sanyatko is a top ally of General Banda and Vice President Chiwenga. Looks like Mnangagwa has pressed the wrong button. At this point, there is no turning back. He has to continue in the road that he has put himself in. But this road is going to lead nowhere. He is still shuffling the army lieutenants, the commanders and the generals. He doesn't have to stop this because if he does, it's going to eat him. But either way, he's not going to win because the army is not just going to sit there and let him do what he wants. The army already has plans in place on what to do with Munangagwa and Munangagwa also has plans that he needs to do in order to stay into power for the third term. The third term is official in Sano PF and everyone is not happy. So they're just going to gang up against him. He's not going to survive this. Munangagwa has pressed the wrong button. It's only a matter of time before we start seeing dead bodies. He is shuffling everyone everywhere. Even in the media, he is shuffling the editors, he is shuffling the CEOs and every other newspaper in the media sector. They are also being shuffled. And you know why? The media is very important whenever there is a coup. So he also need to make sure that it's airtight over there. Because whenever the coup happens, the army usually go to the media and they take over. That's where they announce their proceedings in the media. So Munangagwa is touching everything. No stones are being left unturned. After what he has done to General Stwenga, he is going to ride this out. This storm is going to ride it out. But one way or the other is going to blow in his face because the army and the generals and the people in Sano PF are not going to let him have that third term. That system was supposed to be over with Mugabe. But looks like Mnangagwa is carrying on with those shenanigans where he instill his intelligence people and they make it like it's the son of PF people who are saying they want him to stay for the third term. Does it mean that there is no other person in son of PF who is fit to rule? Why is that this 80-something-year-old man is the one who is going to stay in power and continue to rule in son of PF? There is so many people in son of PF and he needs to hand over the torch. And this issue of him appointing his close relatives in influential positions, his closest family, his sons, needs to stop. Son of PF is not happy. The army is not happy. Now they are seeing they made a mistake by instilling this guy. They helped him ascend to power, but now he's taking that opportunity to thwart them one by one. If the army doesn't do something very fast, they are going to be finished. He is going to stop at nothing in trying to create this dynasty. He needs this dynasty. He so admires a dynasty that he is going to stop at nothing. So either the army are going to be killed one by one, all those generals. We have seen what was happening during those days of COVID when the army generals and the top officials were dying of COVID and everyone thought this COVID was very selective. It was only picking up government officials. No, it was not COVID. That was a deliberate move by the powers that be that was taking out people of threat, making sure that he deals with them and remains with the ones that are aligned to him. How many can he take out before it backfires? That's the big question. 
and in other news, Mnangagwa throws in towel on Sadak chairmanship. Disputed Zimbabwe President Emerson Mnangagwa has indicated to the Sadak secretary that he now accepts the Sadak position that Zimbabwe will not assume the Sadak chairmanship in August this year at the summit of heads of states and governments to be held in Zimbabwe. The disputed Zimbabwe president, Emerson Mnangagwa, was actually responding to the Sadak communique of last week in which the Sadak secretariat reiterated that the regional bloc's position on the past Zimbabwe elections in August 2023 still not changed. In the same communique, Sadak also formally communicated to the disputed Harare administration that Zimbabwe will not assume the Sadak chairmanship in August this year if the CIOM report on Zimbabwe elections was not resolved. Zimbabwe is going through political turbulence after the August plebiscite, which Sadak dismissed as falling short of revised Sadak guidelines and principles of a democratic election 2021. Sadak has since kick-started processes to correct the illegitimacy in Harare brought by the flawed August electoral process we should see Zimbabwe holding fresh elections sooner or later. Sadak was taking this opportunity to try and put Mnangagwa into a corner and make him sort out this political mess that he got himself in. But looks like Mnangagwa by accepting that he doesn't want that chairmanship anymore. That means he is trying to just continue the way he is continuing and he thinks he's going to ride this along until 2028. So looks like this trick did not work. Mnangagwa is accepting that that chairmanship can just go. I can just proceed the way I'm proceeding. It's just fine. I don't mind doing what I'm doing. I don't mind you labeling me that I stole elections. I don't mind that you can isolate me. I don't mind that they are throwing sanctions at me. I can still continue like that as long as I am the president of Zimbabwe. We are the army. We are the police. We are everything in Mnangagwa's words. He said that. So he so believes that as long as he has those institutions, those government operators, he can soldier on. But by the look of things and what's happening in all those arms, I don't know how long he can pull this through because looks like Munangawa has invited other guests who are protecting him, those Indian missionaries. Now that Munangawa is using a chopper instead of the motorcade, he is surrounded by people who doesn't like him. You're surrounded by people who might be plotting his demise one way or the other. This gentleman might get shot. Yes, presidents get shot if they want to get out of pocket. At this point, no one is going to blame the guys who are going to shoot him. In fact, they might applaud them. They might give him awards because this person is going to be a problem. Everyone is suffering in the country. He is busy consolidating power. We are tired of this son of PF game. Sano PF needs to, to shape up or to ship out. You know what I'm saying? So we are so tired of Sano PF. If Sano PF can exchange leaders in the top office, I think we can have a chance in Zimbabwe. No one cares if Chamisa takes over. Nobody cares who is in office. All we need is a functional economy so that people can carry on what they want to do. But we're just happy that at this moment, Zimbabweans have been exonerated from the sanctions. And these sanctions has only been tightened on Munangagwa and his inner circle, which will make it difficult for him to operate and carry on all his illegal businesses. Because anything that has his name on it is going to be flagged out and is going to quickly be not helped out anyway. No one is wanting to be associated with him. It's going to be so, so isolated that it's going to be difficult to run a country. There is going to be doing all that illegal businesses and by any chance, the Interpol will confiscate whatever that they are doing because he is going to be doing things illegally. It's going to be a very bumpy ride for Mr. Mnangagwa. If I were him, I was going to resign or even the easiest way is to talk to Nelson Chamisa and pretend like I'm doing something. But this man is too proud to do that. He thinks he can talk. He can talk to the opposition leader. The opposition leader has never went to war. Opposition leader is too small. Is too young. It's almost the age of his sons. Bro, he might be younger. Looks like Nagawa doesn't look at Tamisa as an equal opponent. He looks at him like a small kid. He looks at him like a small child. So he's not going to talk to him. You know what I'm saying? So he's only going to understand the act of violence. But looks like the violence is not going to come from the opposition. The violence is going to come from within. 
because that's the language that they understand and i'm so sure eventually and in no time there is going to be a language of violence in zano pf it's going to erupt one way or the other keep your ears to the streets yes let me know what you think let me know what you think in the comment section is Managa we're going to pull out come out clean come at the top or the army faction which has become one with the Chiwenga faction because he is not only now attacking Chiwenga he has extended his wings he's now attacking the army too you know what I'm saying even in Zano PF they're not happy everyone is looking over their shoulders because this gentleman only wants to put his family in positions the government is all going to be the Mnangagwas everywhere now look take a look at Mutulingube. is he even able to do his job properly with Mnangagwa's son always telling him his position is hanging in balance so that's what Mnangagwa wants putting his kids putting his family everywhere to look at everyone to control everything it's like he owns this country 